Okay, so the lesson today, um, God was definitely laying this on my heart because um, Adrian Rogers, I'm going to talk about him every single time, um, and he kind of touched on this subject a little bit. He was actually talking about the sovereignty of Jesus and why he believes in Jesus. And um, he just mentioned it in one point, and I think I wrote one of the points down that he had said, although I don't see see it right now but maybe I did or maybe I didn't um but then when I was looking on the ministry to youth site um to just try and get some verses and stuff to go along with what my mind was already thinking um God laid the this verse out before me I was like okay this is completely perfect oh yes I did write it down I remember it's right here one of the things that Adrian Rogers said because as I was reading this scripture I was like yeah this is exactly what he was talking about and so anyways the title of this lesson is the importance of quiet time so nothing fun or extravagant like we've done the last couple of weeks with kind of wordplay and stuff like that. But um, it is important. It is important to have quiet time. Um, and actually, it's been on my heart. It must have been later last week when I heard this one because um, I made a schedule for the kids starting this week um, that throughout their day, they know what chores they're supposed to do and when and all that. And so later on in the day, they have a quiet time scheduled. And so we're going to talk a little bit later about that, but it just, the importance of it really occurred to me. And as parents, like that's something that, you know, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that our kids are introduced to Christ. So as your teacher and your leader, I want to make sure that you guys are also um, scheduling that into your day. But why, why do we need to have quiet time? So, you know, our schedules are busy. Our schedules are crazy. We are stressed. We are overwhelmed. We are overworked. We are just going 90 to nothing. If we were to take our day and write everything down that we do in our day, it'd probably overwhelm us even more actually, because if you wrote down all of the decisions you had to make, I mean, not just the things that you physically do, but the decisions that you have to make, like the choices that you make, those can become stressful and overwhelming because some of them are like super serious and major and they're really important. Um, and so like if you write all of that down, your day is going to be, your writing is going to be more than actually should fit in a day. Um, I know that if I wrote mine down, it would be that way. Um, so I'm certain that most of you would be that same way. And you might think, oh, I'm not doing anything right now. It's summer. I'm just laying around on my bed all day, which you probably are. And that's okay, whatever. But hopefully you're not. Hopefully you're up and doing things. Um, but if you wrote all of those things in, you would think, how could I possibly squeeze in one more thing? Like, I don't even have time for quiet time. So um, God isn't going to like scald you or like make you feel guilty for not doing quiet time, but it's something that we definitely need to be mindful of. Um, we shouldn't think of it as a burden, as another thing to add to our list and like, oh, I have to do this now too. Like the purpose of quiet time is not to stress yourself out even more. Like, oh, if I don't get my quiet time in today, God's gonna be so mad at me. Um, that's not really what it is, but he will reward you if you do that quiet time. And the purpose for quiet time is a time of peace and a time of rest. And that's what he will reward you with if you make time for that quiet time. So if you have stressful things going on and you just need a break, like take that time for quiet time. It can be five minutes. It can be 30 minutes. It can be an hour. Um, mine's typically 30 minutes and it's typically on my way to work. So if I'm not listening to a sermon, my radio is off. It was really weird. I got in my car Saturday. I think we went, yes, it was Saturday. We went to town for something. I can't even remember what we did. We went, oh, we went and got Asher's birthday present. Um, and I get in the car and I'm like backing out of my driveway. And I'm like, why is my radio on? I never have my radio on in my car. Scotty drove my car Friday night and he turned the radio on. So I was really confused because like my car time is my quiet time because that's the time I have available to squeeze that in. Um, and so quiet time is going to look different to every person. Um, and so like, I said I'd get to it in a minute. Like my kids at the bottom of the list, I was like, I think I called it Jesus time. And they can color or draw. Um, they can paint. They can um, like listen to Christian music. I do ask that they read at least 
a passage of scripture, whether it's a couple of verses or like a, a section where it talks about a certain thing um, or a chapter is what we have encouraged them to do. Um, but it doesn't have to always look like that. And every day can look different. So these are just a few ideas for you to put in there. So um, just having that Jesus time. And so having on light Christian music, I don't recommend necessarily like heavy metal music because that's not getting your spirit in like a calm place um, where you can really tune into Jesus. And there's going to definitely be times where no music, just quiet and just talking to God. And the scripture that I have here is James 4, 8 through 10. Let me pull it closer because my contacts are so dry and so old. I can't hardly read and see. Draw close to God and God will draw close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you hypocrites. Let there be tears for the wrong things that you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. When you bow down before the Lord and admit your dependence on him, he will lift you up and give you honor. Now, that seems like a pretty depressing verse, but I want to read it, like go over it in its entirety. So it does seem, again, depressing, but the whole point of it is drawing near to God and he will draw near to you. So there is no problem too big that God cannot solve it. Like there's a song going through my head. I think we sing it in Sunday school or something. Maybe Andy sings it or something. Um, but there is nothing too big that God can't handle and that he won't handle and that he won't take care of for you. Um, you know, we refer to Jesus all the time as like, he's your friend. Talk to him like you're talking to a friend. And sometimes that's hard to connect with someone that you can't see and tangibly feel. Um, but right now you probably aren't around your friends a whole bunch anyways. Um, but you probably still have that closeness with your friend and you miss them and you have that heart where you want to be with your friend. And so we should put, Jesus in that place. Um, he is our friend. And so there is nothing too big for Jesus. All things that you talk to a friend about, your hopes, your dreams, your sorrows, your sadness, um, bring all of those to Jesus. Um, and this is, this is the point that Adrian Rogers was talking about, was like, we want to just bring all the big things to Jesus, but he's in the small stuff too. He will take care of everything, no matter how big or too small. Um, like there's nothing that he can't, or doesn't want to hear from us. Like he wants to talk to us. If you go and talk to your friend about your greatest hopes and dreams, you know, we talked a few weeks ago, Jesus isn't a genie. Um, he doesn't grant your wishes, but he will hear your requests and he will hear what's on your heart. And he wants to hear those things. Not just that he will, he wants to, he wants you to talk to him no matter what. And just as we prayed, um, for the family's loss, like, he wants to hear that. And so that's this verse really like when I was reading this today and putting this together, it was like, Oh Lord, he wants us to vent to him. He wants us to cry and pour out our hearts. And it doesn't have to all be like best friends, like giggling and gossiping together. Like he wants us to pour out his hearts to him and lift up that sorrow and sadness. And like it says, um, in, um, I'm sorry, let there be sadness instead of laughter. It doesn't have to just be that best friend time, um, gloom instead of joy. So he wants to hear all of those heart wrenching things that you have to bring to him. Um, but it says, let there be sorrow for the bad things that you've done. Like he wants you to come to that point in your life of brokenness and honesty and raw emotion, like pouring all of this out to Jesus. So a lot of times, like you guys know, I've had some struggles lately with work and I've just kind of been down and it's been really hard. Um, but last week I got to talk to my boss slash friend slash person, um, that I've worked with for seven years. And so, um, she is now my boss, but we are still friends. And so I was able to sit down and talk to her and just talking through some of these things created such a relief off of me that was like, I didn't think just talking about them was going to help because there was, nothing was done. Nothing was fixed. It didn't magically make all of my problems go away, but just talking to her about those things 
helped so much. It changed my mood. It changed my attitude towards several things. And it just let me have that release. And that's what Jesus can do for us. You get into your quiet time and your quiet closet and scream and cry and just let your frustrations out and just get those things that are just bothering you off of your chest and just talking to your friend in that way. They're not going to magically go away. They're not just going to disappear because you talked about them. But there will be that relief of stress. All of those things that you wrote down that aren't even going to fit in your 24-hour day, almost said 48-hour day, that, that doesn't exist, right? Um, your 24-hour day that you don't even have time to squeeze in that quiet time in between two of those things, let all of those things go and out and talk about them and get through them. And it it gives you a piece that you didn't know that was possible just by talking about them. So you bring all of those things to God and he's telling you right here, cry and be sad and be sorrowful. Bring all of those things to me because when you come close to me, I am going to come close to you. When you vent to your friend and you guys just cry over something, um, dudes, boys, I don't know. You probably don't cry with your friend. Maybe you do. And you should, if you, if you need to, <laughs> but, um, you know, I know girls have like cry sessions and stuff like that. Do you not feel so much closer to your friends? You do think about how close you will feel to Jesus. If you allow yourself to get to that broken, vulnerable spot where you're like, I just can't like, Lord, just take it all from me because I can't do this anymore. Just pouring this out. And just as much as this verse sounds sad and depressing, I realize what I'm saying is, but it doesn't even have to be that. Talk to him about like, about your day. Like I did dishes today, Lord, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Or, oh my goodness, the dishes were just so disgusting today. And my brother's such a moron and he left um, the milk in the bowl and it stunk. I don't know. You know, just vent and pour all these things out to God. He wants to hear from you. And the more that you talk to him, the closer you will feel to him. Y'all, I talk to myself all day long. If you're not around me very often, um, and you come around me and I'm talking to myself, it's normal. I promise. Cause I do it all the day, all the time. I'll be talking to myself at work and thankfully now I wear a mask because they can't see my mouth moving at work. Um, but they can hear me sometimes and they're like, are you talking to me? I'm like, no, I am talking to myself. I'm talking to the Lord. Honestly, I probably should start saying that cause then it might help them draw nearer to the Lord. I don't know. Um, but I do, I talk to the Lord all day long, whether I'm complaining, I shouldn't be, but I am a lot of times, or I'm thankful because something went right, or, um, I'm working on a sewing machine and I cannot, no matter how minute I'm adjusting this thing over and over and over and can't get it right. And I'm like, Lord, please just help me get this. And he gets, he helps me get it. He gives my, a clear mind. So when we are drawing near to the Lord, he is drawing near to us. And he will help us through this time. Um, what was the last verse? Um, when you admit your dependence on him, he will lift you up and give you honor. Like when we admit that we need him, like I cannot do this on my own. Lord, I cannot get through this day. It could be five seconds that you are stopping your chaos and your stress and you are deliberately spending quiet time with God. You have shut off the other things and you're like praying to God and having a deliberate, deliberate moment with God. He will honor that. He'll see that. And he will give you a peace and a rest within your mind that you didn't think was possible. I don't always do this. Like I will stress myself out. I will freak myself out. I will make myself insane and I will cry and I will complain and I will do all the human things because that's what we are as human beings. But when I do this, it makes me think how dumb I am. Like, why do I not do this more often? Um, it's insane. So God, the God, I need to get on with my notes because I just checked my time and it's 23 minutes. The God of the universe wants to hear from you. God cares. God cares for you no matter how big or small or dumb you think that your problem is. God wants to hear from you. The God that created everything, he created you and he wants to hear from you. He wants that time to spend with you. So how do we do that? How do we carve out time in the craziness? Like I said, it can be the, the five seconds where I'm like, okay, stop losing my mind about the sewing machine. Lord, please 
help me right now. Like I need you to help me get this machine fixed. It can be that simple. It can be five minutes where you are like, okay, quiet. I'm going to grab my devotional. I'm going to read this word. I'm going to just sit in this room and, and talk to you, Lord. I wrote down brain dump. I heard this on, um, this girl I watch on YouTube, not Adriana Brooklyn. You're probably going to ask, um, a different girl. And like when you are just like writer's block or something, almost you just, you can't process all the craziness that's in your mind, do a brain dump. And I'm, I never heard of this, but I love it so much. I've done it so many times since then. And you just get a piece of paper, a notebook, and you literally just start writing anything that comes in your head, anything just brain dump. And so brain dump to God, like anything that comes across your mind, just start saying it out loud to God. You don't have to say it out loud. We sing this other song in church. So you don't have to pray out loud. Um, he knows your thoughts. Um, and so you don't have to say anything out loud. You can just sit there and brain dump, write everything down onto the paper. And God is going to hear that and see that and know that and feel that. And it is just going to be such a release. You might think, I don't know how to talk to God. I, I, I don't even know where to start. Just start with who you are and what's cluttering up your mind that you, you can't even process what to ask God for. Don't ask him for anything. Just tell him everything that's on your mind and on your heart and do a brain dump. And that gets you flowing and it gets you going and it helps you talk through things and think through things. And it helps you open up to what God is speaking to you so that you can hear from him. Um, sometimes just getting it off your chest helps just getting it out of your mind. I kind of already said that one about talking to my friend, you talk to Jesus, just getting it off of your mind. It's, it helps just like blah, 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 word vomit or whatever. Like, Sometimes we just got to do that. We just got to release it. And it becomes so much more important than we realize. And like I said, the, the times that I like don't do it and then I do and I'm like, why? Why don't I just do this every single day and every single time? And that's, that's what we're trying to instill in the kids like from this young age, from you guys' age. Like, let's learn this now instead of being 30, however old I am. How old, how old am I? 38? I'm fixing to be 38? I don't even know anymore. Um, years old and starting to figure this stuff out. Um, I want to help you guys. There is no one or right way to spend time with God. There is only one way to get to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. But there is not only one way to spend time with God. You can, like I already have gave all the suggestions. You can cry. You can scream. You can vent all of your frustrations. You can sing. You can laugh and dance and have a joyful time with God. Most certainly he wants you to do those things too. If you are having a good day, rejoice in it and spend that time with God, dancing and singing and having a joyful time. He wants all of us, like the good and the bad, the ugly and the stinky and the pretty and the floral smell good times. Whatever we are in that day, in that moment, he wants that. He wants every piece of us, no matter who, how good or bad we think we are, Jesus wants us. And so we are to reciprocate all of those things to him. So whatever we are going through, that's what he wants to hear about. We don't have to put on a show. We don't have to have floral, florally words. Um, the wedding song just popped into my head. If you love me, then just love me. Don't give me pretty words. Um, lay your life down out the altar, altar. Let me see how serious you are. We did a whole lesson on that last summer. Um, but we don't have to give God just pretty words. He knows us. We are real and raw and people that live lives in this ugly, sinful world. And there's nothing we can do to make ourselves perfect before we come to God. He wants us how we are, where we are, when we are. And then he changes us from within. So we don't have to get all pretty and made up and put on these pretty words and have these like fluent, beautiful prayers or anything like that. He wants you how you are. So there is no one way to talk to God or come before God or spend quiet time with God. And there's no right way either. The way that you do it, he honors that. That's all he says. He doesn't say like, come to me at church at seven o'clock on Wednesday night with your Bible. You should do all of those things, but that's not what this says. He just says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. 
He doesn't tell you where to go to get to him. He it's not a building. It's not a place. You know, it can be through your phone on a Wednesday night because we're dealing with a pandemic in this crazy world. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And then rounding that out, bow down before the Lord and admit your dependence on him and he will lift you up and give you honor. When you feel down, when you are crying and screaming for God to just give you that peace that you so much need, um, he will lift you up. He will lift you up. And sometimes we get awfully heavy. You ever tried to pick a kid up? Like your friends, you guys are goofing around and they're just like dead weight lying around and they're just flimsy and floppy and it's hard to pick them up and it kind of takes you a while to get there all situated because they're just floppy. That's how God picks us up sometimes because we are just flimsy and floppy and he's, he's picking us up, but we're not cooperating too much. Are we? We need to give our total dependence on him, admit our dependence for him. That's what that verse said. And then he will lift us up. So we need to come to that place where we know we need him. We know we need to spend time with him and we make that commitment, whether it's five seconds or five minutes or one hour or 2.4 hours, which is what we're supposed to give him because of our tithing time. Each day, if we are giving him that time, he will give us honor and he will give us peace and he will give us rest. So I hope this lesson has helped you understand the importance of quiet time and given you some ideas on how to incorporate quiet time into your day and how to live it out to um, not just, you know, say you're a Christian or like say, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to have prayer time um, to realize that we just need to fit it in. It's not a burden. It's just something that we need to do because that's what God asks of us to do. So, um, okay, that's all. I love you guys. I'm going to, um, Scotty, you want to close in prayer? Okay. He doesn't want to, um, he doesn't love the camera as much as I do. I don't love it. I don't hate it either though. So that's okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to close in prayer and, um, get off of here for you guys. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this lesson. Um, thank you for teaching me personally this lesson over the last couple of, um, certainly days and weeks, um, because I've, I've definitely needed it recently, Lord. And I just thank you for, um, uh, opening my eyes and mind to this, and then also allowing me to go forth and teach it to, um, my friends and students here, Lord. Father, I pray that, um, you be with anyone that was listening to this message tonight or in the future, Lord. And Father, anyone that's been kind of hung up and, doesn't know how to talk to you, Lord. I just pray that you just really hit them hard with this message, that it doesn't have to be any certain way, that you just want to hear from us. And Father, I just pray that we each make time every day to spend with you, no matter how little or how much time we're able to give, but that we make commitments within our hearts to spend that time with you and that we realize and understand the importance of it, that you draw near to us when we draw near to you, Lord. Um, one step closer to you, you draw one step closer to us. And it's just, um, as this world goes sooner and sooner until we actually get to embrace you, Lord. And, um, in the meantime, father, just help us to spend any moments during the day with you that we possibly can father. I know that you are still working on each of us each day. And I pray father that you just continue to give us your wisdom and allow us to um, understand your words and your ways and help our friends and family to do the same, Lord. We just love you so very much. And Lord, in your holy name, I pray. Amen. So anyway, with that, I'm going to get off of here and make sure you're praying for um, your friends and family during your quiet time and um, your fellow students and um, just this world, this crazy place that we're living in right now. I love y'all. Bye-bye.